In the past three years, I have taken 68,417 photos with this lens, the Canon RF 51.2. It's big, it's heavy, it's very expensive, and it is technically outclassed by lenses that are half its price. Here's why it's my favorite lens that I've ever used. The autofocus on this lens is stellar. I've been using it on a Canon R, Canon R6, and a Canon R5, and on each camera it has performed flawlessly. Even on the R, which is an older camera than the R6 and R5, I've been able to open up the aperture to 1.2, throw the autofocus into servo, and track backwards with a couple as they exit their wedding ceremony, and it didn't miss focus once. It feels so nice to be able to trust the autofocus of this lens, especially at 1.2, because that's the opposite of the experience that I had with the previous generation of this, which was the Canon EF 50 1.2. Uh, that lens was a lot softer at 1.2. It was uh, a lot more hit or miss with the autofocus. And this is just like a breath of fresh air, being able to use it in any situation and know that it's going to lock on focus every single time. Now, kind of going hand in hand with the autofocus performance is the sharpness of the lens. And to me, the RF 50 1.2 has the perfect type of sharpness. What I mean by that is it is absolutely a sharp lens. Just look at these examples of images taken with this on the 45 megapixel sensor of the Canon R5. It's undeniably a sharp lens, but it doesn't have an overly clinical level of sharpness. If you look at websites like DxOMark that compare lab tests of sharpness between lenses, that's where you notice that the Canon RF 50 1.2 actually is outclassed by lenses that are far less expensive than it. Uh, actually like the Sigma Art 50 1.4 that I have the EF mount to. Uh, that is technically a sharper lens, but coming from that Sigma lens that is ranked so highly in sharpness on DxOMark, I personally like the way that the images come out on this RF 50 more. I think it has a really nice balance between sharpness and character that is really pleasing on skin and people and real world subjects. Speaking of character, this might seem like a hard metric to quantify, but I really do believe that there's something special about the glass in this lens. The way that it flares when hit with direct sunlight, the way that it renders bokeh in the background, the way that it just falls off into the out of focus elements behind your subject, even the way it renders color, I think there's just something better about this glass than in most lenses that I've used. Compared to the RF 35 1.8 lens that I also have, even just looking at it through the viewfinder, the 35 feels a lot more dull than the 50 does. Interestingly enough, I also feel the same way when I have the RF 70 to 200 lens. So maybe it is a, a difference between the Canon L lenses versus the non L, but whatever it is, I, I really just think that this RF 50 in particular has something very special inside of it. The control ring might seem like a small addition to this lens, but after using it for the past three years, I've gotten so used to it that I don't wanna go back to not having it. For me personally, I map this control ring to ISO. So when I have my camera up to my face, I can change the ISO on the front of the lens, I can change my shutter speed, where my index finger is on that front shutter dial, and I can change the aperture with the back scroll wheel which means that I never actually have to take my camera away from my face when I'm using it, which I really appreciate. It feels like, in a weird way, like an old film camera where you have all of your, you know, your, your functional, physical, tactile buttons and rings and everything, except it's like, a hundred thousand times faster than any film camera ever. So it just gives that kind of extra level of functionality that I've really come to appreciate. And again, I wouldn't want to go back to not having a control ring on my lenses. Now, of course, there are some cons to this lens as well. And I already mentioned all of them in the intro. So let's just quickly rehash them again. This lens is very expensive. I bought this three years ago in 2019 for $2,300 and it's 2022 and still going for $2,300. So unless you're able to catch it on a sale or buy it used, uh, you're gonna be paying north of $2,000 for this lens. And that's a hefty investment. There's no getting around that. And frankly, that means it's not for most photographers. I would say, unless you're a professional, you shouldn't buy this lens because that is a ton of money to spend on one lens. 
and there are a lot of ways that you could use that money better, especially if you're just starting out, just being able to get more prime lenses or uh, you know a couple different lighting accessories as well um, there's just there's better ways to spend your money when you're just starting out I also mentioned that this lens is heavy and it it really is it's also big it is nearly twice the size of the EF version of this lens from the previous generation of Canon L lenses and man it is it is a, a lot to carry around it's funny because I don't really notice the size or weight of it when I'm using it for a wedding or commercial shoot or any kind of professional context. But as soon as I wanna use this for anything personal, that's when it feels really cumbersome to use. And it's why I'm actively looking for a camera like a Fuji X100V or an X-Pro3 right now because I want something that's a little more compact and a little lighter weight because this just doesn't feel like an everyday kind of lens. Um, the size of it really does discourage me from using it for my personal life just because it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Here's my point in saying all of this. For me, I'm a working professional and I also love 50 millimeters. It's my favorite focal length. So this is kind of a no brainer for me to invest in. And I've had it for three years. It shows no signs of slowing down. And I've made some of my favorite work of all time with this. So for me, it was a totally worthwhile investment, but there's no getting around the fact that this is expensive. A lot of the RF lenses in Canon's lineup are. So if you're not doing this professionally, don't buy this lens. There are plenty of better uses for your money and there are plenty of other things that you can do in the meantime. But if you are a professional photographer in the Canon ecosystem, I think this lens needs to be in your kit. And I have a feeling that three years from now, just like me, you won't regret this purchase either.